I've got one that can see. On the 12th of February, the Pope went to Cuba and met um, the head of the Orthodox Church. Now, the thing that's interesting is that this is the first meeting in 1,000 years since the Orthodox Church split from Rome, right? So it's a historic thing. Now, what's even more interesting is this. The next day, um, Kirill, the head of the Orthodox Church, leaves for Antarctica, right? Now, the article says that he went there to see the penguins and to visit the scientists um, that had set up a little church. Now, if you believe that, I've got some of Saddam's nuclear weapons to sell you. I'm going to talk about geoengineering, but I want to share a story with you. Every time I'm asked to speak, I, I'm a, I public speak for a living, um, I'll go into that, but I don't get nervous to speak to you. What I get nervous about is not getting emotional telling you my story. First thing I want to ask you is, who doesn't believe it exists? Anybody here on the fence? Okay. Well, hopefully when you leave here today, you don't just believe it. You share the information that I'm going to share with you, and you get more people on board to stop this ethical crime, unethical crime. Well, I have to kind of fast forward. I want to say around 2006, I started kind of opening my eyes to how the military wasn't really what I thought it was. And people approached me knowing what I did for a living and said, have you ever heard of chemtrails? Well, I hadn't. And that sparked my interest. So I went online and I looked at chemtrails. To summarize it, in an attempt to debunk this conspiracy theory as I thought it was, I didn't debunk it. It literally changed my life. Um, like I said, this is hard for me because it's not easy standing here and telling my story. One day I was going through that computer system, which if you want to look it up, it's called an Air Force Form 3952. It is the approval of ha hazardous materials. I was finding tons and tons of large quantities of aluminum, barium, strontium in the forms of oxides and sulfates. Right. Or is there, or maybe, maybe Pope told the Kirill about the edge, I don't know, like, it, it just seems something like there's something that can only be seen from Antarctica, right? And with all the chemtrails, it just makes you think, what are they trying to hide? So maybe there is something in the sky. Or maybe you just went to see the edge. I don't know. But it just seems really fishy. And it reminded me of something. And that was this. Pope. Hello. I would like to present my theory on why the sky is blue. In an interview recently with Patricia Steer on Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, I proposed that the dome or firmament over the Flat Earth was composed of sapphire. And there were this was my reasoning behind it. First of all, sapphire is very hard, second only to diamonds in hardness. Secondly, it has an extremely high melting point, over 2,000 degrees. It's light conducting, so it could be used to manage a kind of a planetarium type effect. It's heat conducting, so it could be used as a heat sink. It's paramagnetic, so magnetic fields could transfer through it and it wouldn't be impacted. You wouldn't change anything as far as the molecular structure. Um, but recently, last week, um, Nathan Oakley proposed a question on why is the sky blue? And I commented an answer to him, and this video is probably a more detailed answer. My answer was reminded me that another property of sapphire is that it's highly reflective. And so it's this property of highly being very reflective that creates the blue sky effect on the earth. Right, but what you can tell is that every evening uh, on the sunny side of the evening sky, you have stripes on, on the star side of the evening sky. 
you have a very clean and pure view onto the stars, which explicitly says you have something in the air that is photoionizing. Just when, when the sun goes down, mostly the sun is hidden by stripes, by persistent contrails. And if you then just turn around by 180 degrees and you look out, on, on the half of the sky that is already dark, you will not see any stripes. During nighttime, you don't have stripes. If this would be vapor, like people tell, it would be there day and night. And there's no other explanation than, you have, that, than that you have some particles in the air that are photoionizing, that are taking in sunlight, produce current, get uh, into a plasma state, and then this plasma state is attracting the vapor. The second thing you see is really strange uh, rainbow-like structures in the clouds in certain angles from the sun. And this also from water and, um, and um, ice crystals, you know the angles. These structures are not similar to the natural rainbow. And actually, it, it goes much further. If you look not into the chemical, chemical analysis, but if you look into the microscopy of uh, raindrops and snow, you find all those particles and you can exactly define uh, uh, by uh, crystallography what mineral you can see and all those minerals you find the barium strontium titanate you find uh, aluminum oxide you find manganese oxide um, and all these particles if you look into the um, literature of industrial nanoparticle production all the particles you find in industry are produced by spray pyrolysis because part of the particulate plasma is this barium strontium titanate, this is piezoelectric crystal with very, very elaborated opt electro-optical um, properties. And it's made for being activated by all si kinds of, of radiation. It does, yeah, it, it, it photoionizes, but if there's no sun, you can use it also during night by shooting a microwave onto it. And then once it's activated, you can do all, all sorts of things. You can modulate waves on it, you can heat it up to 10,000 degrees to make rockets just melt to pieces. And if, if you learned how to control the field, you can up-concentrate energy at any spot you want. So th this is when, when uh, the people in the military domain talk about possibilities like uh, making uh, nuclear bomb-like explosions by uh, discharging scalar fields. This is something that is discussed. It is within the possibilities of physics at that point.
sedenta de sangue, sanguinoleta Prepare-se pra nova ordem, meia, meia, meia Os senhores do mundo arquitetam o um plano Pra uma imensa redução de seres humanos Sete bilhões exterminados, sem piedade Pois é assim que governa os iluminados Treze famílias que dominam todo o planeta Judaico, maçônicos, discípulos da besta Anticristo televisivo, olha o que tudo vê Na verdade é o Big Brother que controla você Que vê TV e acredita nas mentiras da tela Absurdos do jornal e da telenovela Acorde e não se renda a Umbrella Corporation É a Matrix indicando o final dos tempos Então lute, haja, seja resistência Contra a nova ordem, meia, meia, meia Firmament. Look at this. I mean, I'm just shocked and stunned. I mean, that this is crazy. Um, I honestly cannot believe what I'm seeing. I mean, that that looks like a dome to me. I don't know about you. Um, what do you guys think? This picture is in the public domain. Uh, Props to Scott Donnelly, Scott Patrick Donnelly, uh, left a comment that he found this picture, and it's, um, let me just show you, here it is, uh, Museum Victoria Collections. This is the original photo. And it's taken by, was taken by George Rayner. so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video presentation if you did please subscribe to my youtube channel like the video and share it on your favorite social media sites there's a lot more to come so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time